So you're thinking about getting into tech, you might have heard about the high salaries, the gourmet breakfast platters, and even the remote working options. And whilst all of these are a feature of working in tech, or they can be, it's not the complete picture, right? And the reality on the ground can be very different. So after a few years of working in the industry, specifically as an SRE, I thought it'd be nice to share some of the things that I kind of wish I knew going in, which can be helpful in setting expectations, um, also excitement because it is a lot of good as well as you know the other stuff but I hope this helps you wherever you are in your journey so let's just get into it. So the first thing you should know is that whilst the salaries are high, higher than a lot of other industries, so are the expectations. Working in tech can be very fast paced and at times quite high pressure right the environment can change pretty much in an instance right like sometimes things are smooth and running and sometimes something might happen and you your expertise your experience are relied on to kind of bring the system back to normal whether you're a software developer a devops engineer site reliability engineer or you know you work on the business side you work on customer service wherever it is you may be called upon and it may not be like you know the easiest of situations to handle and you've got to be able to deal with that Right, like you're not being paid high salaries just for the balance is effectively what I'm saying. And I know a lot of people have spoken about the money and all the other perks of working in tech, which is great. But I think it's important to understand the whole picture that there is an expectation on you, of course, that will match that salary that you are getting. So the second thing you should know is that not all offices will look like Microsoft or Google or Apple, right, where you get breakfast, lunch and dinner and snacks all day long. And there's a ping pong table in the middle of the office. And that's because tech is a, an umbrella term, right? It encompasses so many different roles and a lot of companies have a tech department, right? Like a non-profit or healthcare services or banks and not all of them are going to be set up like that, which is okay, but it's just important to understand that, especially when a lot of the time, myself included, we watch day in the life videos and they may look very different to what your first or any of your jobs may look like when you work in tech. And again, this is all just about setting expectations. And if that is something that is important to you, then it's something you have to consider when you are applying for jobs, like if the office environment is really important. Um, otherwise, just understand that <laughs> things vary, right? Tech, like I said, is very broad and pretty much integral to most companies, if not every single company has some sort of tech department for their website, their apps. And so just bearing that in mind can, can really help. So the third thing to know is that you don't have to know how to code to be in tech. And this is really important whether you know how to code or not. I get a lot of people come up to me and ask, you know, I want to be in tech, I want to work in the tech industry, but I don't know how to code. And I don't really have an interest in learning how to code. Can I still be a part of this? And I didn't know until I actually got into the tech world that lots of people occupy spaces that don't require coding, right? Like not one script they've ever written, one line of Python or Java, and yet they form part of the system, like from agile coaches to product owners, designers. And these people have a role to play and yet they don't code. It's also important to know this because if you are somebody who is on the technical side, it's important that you understand that communicating and being able to communicate ideas to people who may not have the same level of expertise or knowledge as you is really important. There's no point explaining the complexities of an algorithm or something in, in terms that somebody else won't understand. And knowing that when you go in and being prepared for that can really make the difference to your experience of that particular job and also potentially your path to progression. So the next thing that you should know is that there are a lot of exciting roles in tech beyond just software development or a software engineer. And the reason I say this is because when I was on the outside looking in, I think the main thing I really heard about was software developers, right? The people who kind of build these applications, the software we use. And whilst, I mean, that can be an amazing job and if that's the path you wanna go down, fantastic. But there are a lot of interesting roles in tech, like. I'd never heard about an SRE, Site Reliability Engineer, or even DevOps before I actually entered the space. And now that I am one, I love what I do, right? Like I really enjoy being kind of on that bridge between the kind of development side and kind of the DevOpsy reliability side of work. And there are a wealth of different roles that you probably have never heard of and you won't until you actually get in the industry. That could be your route, that could be your path. So the next thing you should know is that competency is highly rewarded in tech, which is one of the great things about it and why it doesn't usually matter your background, your degree. If you can do the work, you're competent, you will be rewarded for such. 
And that's also because the outcomes in tech are typically quite objective and measurable. Like, are you writing the code you're supposed to write at the quality you're supposed to be, right? Is it doing what we expect? Is it performing how we expect? Are you automating tasks in the way we expect? Are you making those cost savings in the cloud environment as expected? How much are you saving? Like, there are a lot of tangible ways to measure your progress in your work, which can be great, especially if you're someone like me. I like to see that my progress, I like to see what I'm working on. You can also then track your progress, your work, your output, which is great for you know your own understanding of what you need to do to develop and what you're already really good at. But also when you're ready to move on, to elevate, to progress, you have again a measurable objective, you know, look in front of you of what you can do, what you have done and what you will do in the future. On the contrary, if you're somebody who perhaps is a tendency for slacking or you know, you're just not a fan of these objective tracking measures and things like that, Mm, might want to reconsider or you may want to become a fan of it because that's a big feature in the tech world I would say. The next thing you need to know is that there is a lot of room for creative and artistic expression in tech more so than you may realize. There are obvious places like the design side of things but also in the code itself and how you decide to write the code, how your team come together to you know develop certain features and things like that even how you decide to automate particular tasks, the kind of architecture that you use within the cloud. There is a lot of room, you know, given the base that you have to explore and to develop things with your own creative flair, which is something that I really like about tech and I've spoken about many a times, that whole blend between the logic and structure and the creative expression. The next thing you should know is that there is a lot of competition in tech and getting in isn't going to be easy. I know a lot of us have spoken about how, you know, pretty much anyone who has the tenacity, the willingness and really gets a grasp of these concepts can get into tech and that is true. But of course, these great jobs, these six figure jobs, these remote positions, these amazing offices, a lot of people want those jobs and you're not just competing with people who may be like you, a self-learner or fresh out of uni. You'll be competing with people who've been in the industry for years, sometimes decades people have been in the industry. And so it's good to keep that in mind. It's not just a breeze. Okay, I you know I've done some courses and now I'm gonna get a job. It doesn't quite work like that. And it's important again to have that expectation and know that that is the reality. And the final thing I think you should know, and something I really like about tech, is there's usually a lot of scope to move departments, kind of move through different specialities and areas of expertise, especially in your early days. Like a lot of companies want to develop their, their employees, uh, their tech employees, and as such, if you show an interest in particular things, you know, you're like, actually, I really want to explore this particular language and try doing some stuff in this language, or, you know, even actually want to see what the software developers are up to and kind of build those skills or whatever it is. Often, not always, but companies will be very open to that. One, because they're interested in keeping you, and anyway, your interest in learning is a great sign, right? And also it could benefit them, like you having a wider variety of skills or broader scope could be beneficial to them as well as yourself. So I really like that element of fluidity, I guess, in tech. And sometimes people just stick kind of to the same thing going forever, but again, there usually is options depending on the company and how big it is to kind of explore those interests and the room for growth. And so those are the things I think you should know. Working in tech can be amazing, but it is a job and there are realities of the job and the market like any other job, which I think is really important to know and understand so that your experience can be as exciting but rooted in reality as possible. Um, if you've watched this video, you may also be interested in checking out this video here where I talk about breaking into tech and getting through the interview process and how I actually managed to do it from, you know, studying geography to going into tech over here. I'll see you in the next video.